Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials moving us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number five, and I'm going to discuss complex numbers. So the previous videos to this, which are relevant, are actually not in the section of electromagnetism to optics. I did four videos entitled Complex Numbers, and I hopefully have all that you need to know in those videos. So what I'm going to do in this particular video is to uh, summarize all of that as quickly as I can. If you're not following it, move uh, back to my videos on complex numbers where I've done everything in detail. And I motivated in video one, I introduced it in video two, did a lot of work in video three and closed it up in video four. Okay, so specifically I suppose video three is, is the more um, is the longest of the lot. Okay, so let's start let's start talking about complex numbers. So on the number line we know that we have we have the the numbers, we have the negative numbers. We have zero, and then of course we have the, the positive numbers. Okay, and I've left out minus one and one. But what we what we also have there are the rational numbers like pi, like e, and zero point five. So with these numbers we can almost do everything. We can do add addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. What we cannot do are get the square roots of negative numbers. So we we define the Greek letter iota as a square root of minus one. And I'm I motivated in video one of my videos on complex numbers. I showed you why we needed to discuss this. So now we know that iota or the square root of minus one is is different. So what we come up with are things called Argand diagrams, where we draw the complex or the square roots or the complex numbers perpendicular to the normal number line. So this is the normal number line here, from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then we draw perpendicular to it our imaginary numbers. And now we go from an infinite number plane, excuse me, an infinite number line to an infinite number plane. So in general we call the imaginary number as z is equal to x plus i times y. Okay? Now, because we can draw it like this, we're able to do a small bit of trigonometry and invoke the angle theta. So if we invoke the angle theta, we're able to rewrite, and let's say the magnitude of or the length of this is a, we can rewrite the complex number z as a outside of cos theta plus i times sine theta. Why this is important is because cos theta plus i times sine theta is actually part of Euler's formula. This is e to the i theta. So we can rewrite all our complex numbers as a outside of e to the i theta. Now, the next thing we need to do is our complex conjugates. So that is z star. And what we do is we swap the sign or change the sign in the complex numbers. So this would be x plus, or excuse me, minus i times y. Okay, and z star is a, a multiplied by e to the minus i theta. Okay, now I'm going to clear this and move on. So that is most of the things we require. If you're looking for a proof of Euler's formula, you need to go back to my other video, so I have it done there. So there are lots of interesting properties uh, resulting from this particular, uh, from this representation of complex numbers using Euler's formula. First of all, multiplication. If you multiply z1 and z2, it's simply going to be their moduli, a1 and a2, and e to the i theta 1 plus theta 2. If you want to, if you want to divide them, it's something similar. It makes life very easy. Now, there are lots of interesting properties, and I'm just going to start writing them down, okay? So I'm sure they're very easy to prove. So e to the z1 plus z2 is actually equal to their product, like that. This means that if we take e to the z, which we know is e to the x plus i times y, we can rewrite that as e to the x multiplied by e to the i times y. Now to get the modulus or the magnitude of your complex number, 
what you need to do is multiply your number by its complex conjugate. So we get zz star, and we need to take the square root of the lot. And if you look at that, what we actually get is just e to the x. So because cos and sine are periodic, in other words, if you go 2 pi, you go back to where you started. We also know that the cos of 2 pi is equal to 1, and the sine of 2 pi is equal to 0. And using that with Euler's formula, we can rewrite e to the i 2 pi as 1. We can write e to the i pi and e to the minus i pi as also 1. And we can write e to the i pi over 2, well, plus or minus i pi over 2, as equal to plus or minus i. So these are all very useful identities which you'll be using. Now, as I said earlier on, because cos and sine are periodic, the complex exponentials, complex exponentials are also periodic. And we can prove this by saying e to the z plus i2 pi. We can invoke our properties, the multiplication or multiplicative properties, and we get back e to the z, because we know that this here is equal to 1. So just to, to be most um, most general, we can write a complex number as the sum of its real component plus i times the imaginary component. All right. In order to get the real component, we need it's just a cos theta, or the modulus cos theta, and the imaginary component is or, or a sine theta. Like that. Okay. Finally, well, actually, second pen on pen ultimately. I have two more things to show you. To many people, this is the most interesting and most amazing formula in all of mathematics. Okay, you might wonder, well, why, why that is? First of all, just to prove it, if we draw the number line, and we plot this, you'll find that we go from plus one the whole way back to minus one, and then if we add 1, we go back to 0. Now why is it interesting? Well, look at the numbers which this particular equation has. It has e, pi, iota, 1, and 0. In fact, it pretty much has all the important numbers in both mathematics and physics. These numbers are seen absolutely everywhere. So that's why it's, it's generally regarded as the most amazing, uh, or most um, interesting formula in all of physics, or equation, or expression, or identity, whatever you want to call it. And finally, just to show you how to go from complex exponentials to trigonometric functions. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my black. So we know that e to the i theta is cos theta plus i times sine. So I'm going to write it like, like so. If we add and subtract these, we're able to get the formulas for cosine and the formulas for sine. So e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is as follows. Because it's twice cosine theta, because the, the sines cancel out, and we can write the cosine of theta as, co as e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2. In a similar fashion, we can calculate what sine theta is. So this time we have e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. This time, of course, we're going to get twice sine theta. And we can rewrite it as sine theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over twice i. And I'm missing an i here. And that's all I want to show you about complex numbers. If you have any questions or you feel I've missed some steps or left them out, I did that on purpose because I've done the others quite detailed in uh, my, my other video section. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also click on, or excuse me, add a comment below.